Well, let's get some more analysis now. Our chief foreign editor, Rob Parsons, is here. Uh, Rob, uh, Germany seems to be giving out the message that uh, things could be about to get very difficult with regards to uh, gas supplies. And certainly, as we saw in that report, that looks like it could very much be the case. Yeah, I mean, ever since the war in Ukraine started, obviously, there's been a lot of concern that the Russians might just cut off the gas supply. Uh, Germany itself put an end to Nord Stream 2, which was meant to inject a huge amount of extra Russian gas into Germany, but kept Nord Stream 1 going, because without it, it argued, the German economy sim simply couldn't function, not to mention what the impact would be on ordinary Germans when, once winter comes. Uh, but a couple of things have happened happened in, in, in recent weeks, which have caused concern in Germany that the Russians may be considering switching off the taps. The first was when they sent a, a turbine critical to the functioning of Nord Stream 1 to Canada for repair. The Canadians, for a while, looked like they were going to make it subject to the sanctions uh, on, on the Russian economy. The Russians cut back the supply through Nord Stream 1 by 40%. The Germans got very jumpy indeed, put a lot of pressure on the Canadians to row back. They did. Uh, and the, the, the hope and expectation in Germany is that the Russians will put the supply back up to 100% again. But, uh, as you just pointed out in your introduction, uh, there's a, an annual 10 to 14 day repair period for Nord Stream 1, and they're getting very panicky in Germany at the moment when, when it comes to the end of that period, that the, the Russians may not switch uh, the gas on again. Robert Harbeck said it is the nightmare scenario, but that Germany has to prepare for the worst. There has been nothing no indication has to be said from the, the Russian side that that's what they're intending to do. But the Germans are very conscious of the fact uh, that they are open to threat. What they're trying to do at the moment is get their storage tanks up to as close to 100% by the end of this year as they possibly can, 63% at the moment, so that at least they can see the country through the winter. Yeah, just tell us a, a bit more about how dependent uh, Germany is on, on Russian gas. Well, in a nutshell, massively dependent. You know, over 50% of uh, uh, gas coming into G Germany for, for, comes from, from Russia, or at least before the start of the war with Ukraine, uh, and over 30% uh, of oil as well. Uh, and it's been building up that way for an awfully long time. You have to go back to, to 1970 to get the start of it, when Willy Brandt signed off on a deal with Brezhnev uh, to, to open the first pipeline between Russia uh, to the Soviet Union, as it then was in the Federal Republic of Germany. And even then, leaders in the West were warning the Germans, be careful. Henry Kissinger wrote a letter uh, to Richard Nixon at the time saying, look, I don't, I don't think the Germans, you know, are, are going to fall into the Russians' laps, but they may not really be aware of what they're letting themselves get into here. Uh, the Germans said, we will never have more, take more than 10% of our energy needs from the Russians. 50 years later, here we are, 50% of their gas plus uh, is coming from Russia, although it has to be said that that is being whittled down now that the, the war has started. But they're getting extremely concerned. You know, they're wringing their hands and saying, oh, we accept we made a big mistake. Steinmeier, the president, who was you know, the biggest supporter or one of the biggest supporters of this bridge, this energy bridge between Russia and Germany, saying he got it all wrong. Uh, but now they face the possibility of the gas being cut off. And with winter not that far away, although in the midsummer at the moment it may not seem like it, uh, and they're getting worried about what they're going to do. They're already talking about switching back, switching coal stations, coal-fired power stations back on, returning to nuclear energy, you know, if necessary, switching off the street lamps, shutting down swimming pools, you know, all those sort of things as emergency measures, if it comes to that. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for your analysis. Our Chief Foreign Editor, Rob Parsons, thank you.